Right. Hi, guys. How are we all doing today? I thought I will do a little bit of a get ready with me and explain a little bit what's happened in the last couple of years. I know a couple of you have asked me to uh, do a little bit of a story time video and get ready with me. So I thought I will marry the two together. Seemed like a perfect idea at the time. Let's see if it'll work out. I do have a new microphone now, guys. I am super happy with this one. <laughs> so hopefully I sound a little bit clearer for you. Um, just trying to level up, you know. That's, that's going to be my... Like, that's going to be like my motto for life this year. It's just to level up everything. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, so I have a blank face, nothing on my face right now. I'm a little bit spotty. It's because I am currently using uh, a new retinal cream. It's the first time I've used retinal anti-aging cream. I know I'm getting to that age where I'm starting to see wrinkles, guys, and I don't like it. But anyway, <laughs> I'm using the new ret retinal cream and it can, um, it's called like a retinal purge. It can make your skin break out a little bit just where your skin's getting used to it. It's not too bad, but yeah, I have a few more pimples than I would like. If you guys want me to do a full review of the anti-aging creams, then please let me know because I'm in my 30s and it's the first time I'm really going down the route of using anti-aging cream. So it also might be useful for you guys if you're a similar age to sort of get your head around what you need to start with, what you need to do, because there are a lot, and I did a lot of research myself, to find out what the best thing to do was. <laughs> but I have washed my face. I've just washed my face and I've just had a shower. So first thing I'm going to do is to put my moisturizer on. I just got to go and get it. And like I said, again, if you guys want me to do like a full on... Um, review on moisturizers because I'm not just using the retinal cream. I've kind of got like three different creams that I'm altern uh, alternating with because you're not meant to use retinal creams every day when you start out. Again, I can explain this more in another video. But for today, I'm going to be using the Olay Collagen uh, Peptide and I'm using the little eye cream with it. So yeah, I thought I'll do a little bit of a get ready with me today because... A lot's happened in the last couple of years. I mean, a lot has happened in the last couple of years. And I can't even remember I can't even remember what I was doing last time I saw you guys. I can't remember if I had a job then or I was between jobs. I honestly can't remember. I think I might have been No. I think I was in my job. I honestly can't remember. I know it was before Was it before COVID? Oh my god. I honestly can't remember. It's been so long. <laughs> it's literally been so long since I filmed for this channel and um, I always call this channel my second channel but to be honest guys I'm kind of I'm going to be kind of sort of rebranding things a little bit this will technically be my main channel going forward and then my gaming one which was my main one I'm just going to branch that off as a gaming one that will do. Right, next I'm going to sort out my hair because it has been a while since I had a shower I sort of had a shower and then I realized oh I want to film this video and then I had to set everything up and now my hair has been sat in here for a while so it's probably going to be like super curly now okay not too bad not too bad <laughs> we're good although I've got a bit of a weird thing going on I'm doing a full get get ready with me guys from start to finish I'm planning on filming uh for my gaming channel so I'm just getting ready for that so I thought I'd come and chat to you guys anyway so for my hair now and I'm gonna because I want to kind of do it from the from my hair as well because I know there's a lot of get ready with me's only kind of does the makeup, but I also kind of want to do my hair a little bit too. My hair is like freaking crazy now because it's been in a towel for like 20 minutes. Ugh. But anyway, while my hair's still damp, <laughs> it's gone weird. Why has my hair gone so weird? Oh dear. Whatever. Um, I'm going to be using the Miracle Hair Treatment by Seven. 17? 11. Sorry, why am I saying 17? Isn't that like a makeup brand? <laughs> 11. Um, this stuff is freaking amazing, guys, right? You don't really find this stuff on the high street. This is actually from my salon. And I also use their shampoo and conditioner. Again, if you want me to do a full video on the shampoo and conditioners that I use for my hair, then please let me know. I have been on the hunt for the best shampoo and conditioner that I can find to treat, to keep 
my hair as pink as possible without my hair um, fading. And I finally found something that actually works because a lot of these shampoos that are color safe, even the Body Shop brands, which I used to work for Body Shop, I'll get into that in a minute. Even like the Body Shop brands, it still made my color fade. And it was annoying. I even, I spent so much money on shampoo and conditioner trying to find something that actually worked. A, that actually made my hair nice, but B, I actually kept the color in. <laughs> so after a lot of research, I finally spoke to my hairdresser and I said to her, every time I come in, my hair feels amazing. What is it you guys are using? And I've basically just bought everything that my hairdresser uses on me. <laughs> so this stuff is freaking amazing i think you can buy it on like ebay or amazon so you can find it around um the 11 brands are quite expensive like the shampoo uh, like the shampoo and conditioner are about 15 pound each from the salon or 18 pound on amazon and this one i think it's about the same i think it's like 18 pound or something but it's worth it and this little bottle will last you months it really will so this is um a hair treatment a miracle hair treatment and it's like um, a leave-in conditioner. It's also a detangler and also a heat treatment. It does everything. Um, and it's not a spray. I tend to like spray-based things. Um, this isn't a spray-based thing, but I love it. <laughs> yeah, it does a bit. Um, that reminds you of certain things. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, I just get that. I think I've put a bit too much on, to be fair. But just give it a little rub. And then I just literally just brush it through my hair like that easy probably not the most flattering thing oh and it smells amazing it smells like coconut as well which i love <laughs> yes so i just sort of whack it through my hair while it's still damp and then by the time i actually go to dry my hair properly it will feel amazing to be honest my hair is kind of at the point where i should be blowing dry blow drying it right now but Yes, I might just carry on. Hang on. Let me get rid of this bit because that is going to do my head in while I edit the video. <laughs> I can't believe my roots are growing back already, guys. I only did my hair last week and roots are already growing. <laughs> At least you did my hair six days ago and it's already growing back. <laughs> so annoying. Right, so that's the hair all done. Now it's time for my face. And I need to get on with the story time of actually what's been going on for the last few years. So I'm going to grab my little makeup bag. So I'm just going to prime my face now with the Pore Professional um, Primer. <laughs> the word escaped me then. From Benefit. Um, it's a bit of a weird one, this one. I'm quite new to this one. It's a little bit thick and a little bit like stodgy, but it does go on really nicely. I mean, the finish is nice. It just feels weird to put on. But anyway, I'm going to prime my face now while I explain to you what's been going on. So... I believe last time I saw you guys, I was working in hospitality, I think. And it was in a really nice big estate house where I live. Um, well, not where I live, <laughs> I wish, but in the area that I live. And to be honest, it was a little bit of a crazy experience because obviously lockdown happened. And then... I didn't really, like, to be honest, I didn't really enjoy my time in the cafe. Like, it was good. I mean, the job itself was okay, but I didn't like the hospitality setting. I've always worked in retail and ho the hospitality sector was completely new to me. And to be honest, it's hard work, guys. I take my hat off to anyone who works in hospitality because I don't think I'd ever go back, <laughs> to be honest. No, I don't think I don't think I could be paid enough to go back to hospitality. It was minimum wage as well, which is kind of expected. But oh my god, it was the hardest job I've ever done. Like physically demanding, and people were like more rude, way more rude. People, people are are like hangry guys. <laughs> people get mad, and in the summer it's worse because in the summer you're very busy, and then everyone's hot, and because everyone's hot they get mad at you and they take things out of you. And it's just a whole mess. And I just, I just didn't enjoy it. <laughs> it wasn't my cup of tea. And yeah, and some other things went on, which I'm not going to talk about here, <laughs> maybe in another video. <laughs> but you know, the, the experience, I wasn't thrilled about life working in that cafe. But then lockdown happened. So lockdown happened literally like three years ago now. So three years ago now, I was just in lockdown. And we were locked down for six months. So I had six months off and I did get paid furlough, which was the best thing ever. I 
very, very much appreciate <laughs> that because I know a lot of people still had to work. Um, I honestly value every second that I had off for that because having lockdown and having furlough transformed my life into what it is now. So I am very grateful for it. Obviously, I'm not grateful for COVID. I'm not grateful for the experience, of obviously, but I'm grateful for the time and I'm grateful that I had time to sort of revaluate things and yeah. So anyway, so I, we obviously had six months off for the whole lockdown thing. And then, um, and then of course, during lockdown, you get very bored because you're just sat around, like not doing much. And then I decided to start doing some crafts. And I went down a rabbit hole of making earrings. <laughs> and I made polymer clay earrings of all these like funky types of food I got some photos here for you guys to see it so I made all these miniature food items with earrings uh, with polymer clay and I turned them into earrings and then I realized oh I could sell these so then I went down the rabbit hole which is Etsy <laughs> and I opened up my very first Etsy shop and and yeah it and I was like, I didn't really think much of it to start with. I just thought, oh, I'll just do it for fun. Because it was just during lockdown. I was just like doing it out of boredom more than anything. And then I started to sell a few things. And I was like, oh, I'm making some money out of this. And then I didn't sell a lot to start with. It takes a long time. And again, if you guys want me to do a full video on Etsy, I will. I know I got a few friends who are starting up their businesses from scratch. And to be honest... I know when you start off, you just don't know anything. And I think it would be very beneficial to do a video explaining everything about Etsy or eBay, because eBay is another route you could go and explain everything you have to do about insurance and tax and everything else. So if you want me to do that, then please let me know. <laughs> but yes, yeah, so during the summer, I was selling some stuff. And then I think it was August time that we had to go back to work. And I hated it. I hated it with every fiber of my being. I've had six months off where I've got paid to to finance my hobby, basically, and turn it into something. And now I've got to go back to work. <laughs> I know that sounds really entitled of me. And I know that sounds really bad. But I wasn't a big fan of work anyway, like the hospital, like where I was working. I wasn't a big fan of it anyway. And then having to go back every shift I just dreaded and I got really depressed actually I got to the point where I would cry on my lunch breaks or cry the night before because I just didn't want to go to work and I I, I wish like I with every fiber of my being I wanted to leave that place um especially after lockdown it was just I just had a whole brain reset and the whole way of thinking changed and I just didn't want to work for someone anymore and especially you know if you're not treated the best either it's still a bit you know, it just sucks. <laughs> right, for my foundation, I'm going to be using the Body Shop Fresh Nude. The Body Shop foundation is honestly one of the best foundations I've ever used. And it's so light, it doesn't feel like you've got anything on your face, which is really important to me because I hate things that feel too heavy or too cakey on my face. And they've got loads of different shades now to match different skin types to perfection. Like this is honestly one of the best foundations that I've come across ever <laughs> anyway and it, it's got a weird like applicator thing it's got like a stick thing um which to be honest i kind of prefer because you can kind of scoop it out more to what you need um so i'm just gonna put some of this on my face now i'm still a bit shiny from the um moisturizer but it's fine it will go away once i put the foundation on <laughs> so there's me back at work and then i realized i can't really leave yet because i'm not making enough on etsy to leave and I'm literally like making £20 a month. I mean, I'm hardly making anything. Um, well, no, I wouldn't say £20 a month, maybe like £20 a week or something. But it wasn't enough, nowhere near enough to sustain myself. And I think that was the worst bit of the whole process, to be honest. The worst bit of the whole thing was to knowingly have to go to work, but knowing you want to do something different and you're kind of stuck. It's the worst feeling in the world so I gave myself a deadline I said to myself by Christmas I'll leave oh no it wasn't oh yeah 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 it was August yeah but 
I said to myself, by Christmas, I'll make enough money. I even made a joke to the kitchen staff. I made a note, note to the, I made a joke to the chef, like, don't worry, by Christmas, I'll be running my own business and I'll be out of here. Um, that, that didn't happen. <laughs> um, I got better. I was making a little bit more, but it still wasn't enough to leave. Then it all came to a head in May. I can't really remember what happened. I, I can't remember what the catalyst was. But there was a bit of, uh, you know, it wasn't the best place to work. And I, I honestly can't remember what the, the last, the final thing was. But something happened that was like the final straw to me. And I was like, no, I have to leave now. I'm not ready to quit. I'm not ready to go Etsy full time yet, but I need to get out of this place. So I started, started applying for jobs and then I uh, I applied for the body shop. Now, I love the body shop anyway as a brand. So I was really excited and I got the job, which was amazing. So I got the job in body shop and I started in May. And in my head, I always knew it was going to be a temporary thing. In my head, I was like, this is just to make my life easier now <laughs> while I'm trying to build up my Etsy business. So I started there in May and then, um, yeah, it was there for the summer, basically. And you know what? I loved it. It was so refreshing. It's probably the best job I've ever had, to be honest, um, because I've worked in a lot of retail places. Um, if you want me to do more story times about other places I've worked, I'm more than happy to. I've worked in crazy places like Build-A-Bear <laughs> and stuff like that. Um, so I'm happy to do that as well. But yeah, so... I ended up um, being in Body Shop for the summer, which was the best job ever. Amazing staff discount. I got half price staff discount, loads of freebies. And I just loved the brand anyway. So I was in my element. I loved it so much. I loved the customers. And to be honest, I loved the staff. It's probably one of the, the only places I've ever worked where there's been zero like bitchiness or and zero um, cattiness. It was actually really lush to work there and everyone was really lovely. Um, yeah. And it, <laughs> my God, what a difference it made, like how the management were actually doing all the work, <laughs> which is crazy because in every, every job I've had, and especially in the cafe, I found that like, you just saw a difference. You just saw a huge difference. When I went into body shop, how much the managers actually work, like the managers work more than the staff do. And I was like, wow, like that's amazing. And I, I almost felt bad because there was times I was just stood around on the shop floor and I wanted to help them. And they were like, no, no, no. We just want you to talk to customers. We're doing all the work. And I'm like, I feel bad just standing here. I feel like I need to do more work. And I got paid more as well. It was higher pay than what I had in hospitality. Well, in any job I've had. I got paid above minimum wage. I think it's the living wage or something. But I got paid more just to stand around. I was like, this is the best job ever. I'm getting paid just to stand here. <laughs> I've never experienced that before. So I was really happy with that. Um, yeah, amazing job, amazing people. But it wasn't without its faults. And in September, well, my nan was diagnosed with cancer before. A few years, like for a couple of years now, she had lung cancer. And she was getting near the end of her life. So she actually ended up dying in October. And also in October, I caught COVID. Well, I didn't catch COVID. It was when it was still a legal requirement to stay home. And I got the ping from Tr Track and Trace telling me I had to stay home legally. Otherwise, I'd be prosecuted if I was caught out. So I had to tell my boss that I have to isolate for 10 days. I've been in direct contact with someone. And it's one of those, not just a recommendation, it's a legal requirement. I have to stay home for those 10 days. And she reluctantly was like, OK, I also had holiday booked for the end of that time um, just by coincidence. <laughs> so, again, that wasn't my fault. I had a week's holiday. So I had 10 days off a week's holiday and then my nan was ill. <laughs> so I completely understand why my boss wasn't very happy. But my nan was basically on her deathbed. Like my nan was literally going to die any day. And it was my last time to go see her. And my boss was getting really funny about me having time off. To the point where, and I get it, because I, I get it. I've been off for holiday and for the lock, the COVID thing. But both of those, well, like the COVID thing wasn't my fault. It wasn't me that made me have time off. I had to do it. <laughs> but anyway, and I, you know, I can't help it when my nan's going to die. You know, she's going to die when she's going to die. I can't like control that in any way. So anyway, my boss was getting really funny with me and she wouldn't, to start with, she wouldn't let me time to go see her at all. 
to begin with she wouldn't let me go and see her on her deathbed and then and then she said well you can come to work straight away afterwards I was like I'm not going to go see my nan on her deathbed and then come to work straight away afterwards and anyway she was getting a little bit funny about it and I get it I understand why but like you know there was a bit of a lack of empathy there because well like a lack of sympathy because you know I was like my nan's dying (laughs) and um, you're not treating me like a human. That's what it felt like. I felt like I wasn't being treated like a human and just like a number. As all these sort of establishments are like, they, you know, especially retail and stuff, they they don't really care about you. That's one thing I've definitely learned. Like all these businesses, they don't care about you, not properly. Like in every job I've ever had, they don't care about you properly. They might look like they care about you to a certain level, or they might care about your welfare a little bit, but they don't care about you. Like, you're replaceable, you're a number, you're there to work, and that's the end of it. <laughs> so, yeah. But anyway, it came to a head. And at this time, I started earning a bit more on Etsy. But I wasn't quite there yet. I was almost, I was almost ready to quit. But after this whole thing happened with my nan, and her not letting me have time off, and all that drama, <laughs> I was like, you know what? you know what? I'm not having this. Mm -mm. This is not happening. I quit. And I didn't even want to work my nose. I was so mad. I was actually angry because I was like, no, I'm not being treated this way. I deserve a bit more respect than this. And I wasn't gonna, I was just really angry about it, to be honest. So I went in and she was like, oh, we're going to have a stage one meeting for your absence. I was like, nope, here's my, here's my notice. I quit. And I said to her, I didn't even want to work my notice. And then she kind of was like, well, you have to work your notice. And I was like, I don't have to. But she was like, yeah, but I can't give you a reference if you don't work it. But I was thinking, but I'm being self-employed. I won't need a reference from you. She's like, yeah, but if you ever want to work in the future, I won't give you a reference. So I was like, I reluctantly agreed. I was like, okay, I'll work my two weeks notice because just, you know, it's, it's better to be nice about it, I guess. But still, I didn't really have to do it. Um, and I get why it's because they were doing a they were doing a refit, so a lot was going on. So whatever, I just agreed to do it reluctantly. Um, and to be honest, I am glad I did it because I was very angry at that moment when I quit, and it did give me time to sort of collect myself and sort of say goodbye properly. And to be fair, that was the only issue I had in that job. I loved everything about the job up until that point. There was nothing wrong with it at all. I actually loved my boss, and I actually loved my um, supervisors. They were all so so helpful and so good. So it was just a shame. It just it was just such a shame that that happened because it was actually honestly the best job I've ever had. And I would definitely recommend anyone who wants to work in body shop, like do it. Their ethics are amazing and they're a really good company to work for. And even though I say like a lot of companies don't care, I would say like body shop cares about the staff more than any other one I've ever, more than any other retail place I've ever worked in before. They definitely treat you you know, well, um, but just remember at the end of the day, you are still a number to them. <laughs> right. So I'm going to do eyes next. So for my eyes, I'm using one of my favorite palettes ever, right? To be honest, guys, these makeup revolution palettes are my favorite palettes ever. I've had more expensive palettes and they're, they're honestly like the same as these. I'm not even joking. I'm going to do a full video on these palettes and which ones are my favorites and why I like them so much compared to the other brands. Yeah, I, I've already planned a whole video based on these, but this is what I'm using today. It's the Constellation palette for, um, from Forever Flawless by Revolution. So let me show you the colors. They're so pretty. Look, they're like, oh, look how nice they are. You can tell how much I've used this palette. I've used this palette so much. Um, oh God, it's all dirty as well. I should have cleaned it really before I showed you guys, but never mind. <laughs> now you know my secret. <laughs> but anyway, I'm going to use, um, it's kind of like my go-to kind of colors that I tend to choose from this palette. I'm going to go with the like silvery one here and then like this one over here. Um, I kind of blend the two together and it's so, so pretty. I had it in my notice in October. Well, I left like the week of Halloween or something. It was like the very end of October. I decided to leave. And to be honest, that was the decision that changed my life forever. <laughs> so, oh God, this is really hard to do while talking to you guys. I don't know how other people do it, honestly. Especially because I'm like trying to be really careful. 
got this pimple on my chin just won't go i might have to try to cover that up a little bit better later <laughs> okay so i decided to leave and go etsy full time now i was on the income i had for etsy wasn't quite enough to sustain me but i was very close but i said to myself if i quit now i can put all my time into etsy like i'm doing well on etsy now with the time I'm putting in. If I left my job, I can put more hours and more time into it. And that's what I did. And the first thing I did when I quit my job was to book loads of Christmas fairs. So then I went straight into doing Christmas fairs. And then that actually ended up making me the money that I would have like lost through body shop. So I basically managed to completely switch from Etsy. I mean, from, from like normal work to Etsy, like really, really smoothly and flawlessly and that was honestly the best experience ever and I still I still feel giddy about it now when I'm like when I buy stuff in the shop now I'm thinking oh my god like I'm buying this with the money that I made for myself like the novelty it's been like a couple of years now for me and the novelty still hasn't worn off I still just like can't believe like wow I, I'm actually still living for myself with my own money that I've made myself it's such a cool feeling and I would highly recommend it. If any of you are like ever thinking about starting your own business or being self-employed, like do it. Like do it smartly with some, you know, steps in place and do it like properly. But oh my God, the payoff is worth it in the end. And I still love being my own boss now. It's literally the best feeling in the world. <laughs> a sick day, I can take a sick day without having to ring up my boss like, hey, yeah, I uh, I won't be coming in today. Uh, I've caught a cold and I'm not feeling well. And they're like, that's not a good enough excuse. You have to come in. You only can have time off work if you're vomiting or have diarrhea. <laughs> I don't have to worry about that. If I want a day off now, I can take a day off. And that is honestly one of the best feelings in the world. <laughs> I always believe things happen for a reason. And I believe things happen when they're meant to happen for a reason. And for me, that was it. Like that, it all lined up perfectly to happen when it was meant to happen at that point where... I was ready but I tell you what it is the most scary feeling in the world to hand in your notice and not actually know whether it's going to work out or not it's terrifying to hand in your notice and think oh my god I'm solely responsible for my own money now like it's it is really scary and it's very nerve-wracking to just go all in um but yeah but if you if any of you guys are in that situation right now when you kind of want to leave work and you've got a business and you feel like you're not quite ready, but you feel like you could manage, I would say just do it because you're never going to feel ready. <laughs> That's going to be my biggest thing. You're never going to feel ready. You might get to a breaking point like I do when you're like, right, that's it. I've had enough uh, and I'm just doing it. I, I kind of got to the point that broke the camel's back for me to like rage quit. <laughs> that's kind of what I did. But I was I was ready enough to do it. But you don't have to wait to get to that moment. I would say, and, and to be honest, even though I was ready to quit and I rage quit, I, it was still really scary and I was still like crapping myself a bit because I was like, oh my God, what if this doesn't work out and I'm screwed and I have no money and oh, you start worrying about a million things at once. But just have some faith. <laughs> Trust in the process that it's all going to work out in the end. And you know what? If it doesn't work out, it's not the end of the world. You can just get another job. That's the way, that's another way to say it. Even if it's not like a proper career job and it's just a job in retail, you do have options if it all goes pear-shaped. The other thing that's quite the hard thing to know as well is also um, like just knowing how to do everything. That was the hardest thing for me, I think, like learning about taxes, learning about self-employment, learning about insurance. Like it's such a headache to learn and also they don't teach you these sort of things in school like schools don't teach you anything to do with self-employment and I really think they should it should be on the curriculum because I think it's becoming more popular now to be self-employed than it is to be like a normal employee and more people there's more opportunity to be self-employed now and I think they need to start teaching it more in school because I asked my siblings who haven't long passed school and they said they didn't learn it either. So I know it's still not being taught in school now. Um, well, not in my siblings school anyway, but I do think it's like super important to like do it because, you know. Oh, the colors of this palette is just insane. Look at the color payoff. The color payoff is just crazy. It's so, so pretty. So I'm just going to use the Makeup Revolution um, 
contour palette just to give myself a little bit of contour. I'm only doing a very light one today. And I only, I don't, con I don't really contour. I don't really contour. I would say I'm making shadows more than <laughs> an actual contour. I don't do the crazy TikTok thing of putting like thick lines and blending it all out. I literally just put like a little bit on my cheeks. <laughs> like just like where the shadow would naturally sit for my, um, for my face. And it looks like quite a lot, but once I put the normal powder over the top, it will take the color off a little bit. It's just what I do. I keep it nice and simple. <laughs> I don't go crazy with all these, uh, you know, I feel like this makeup has to be practical for day-to-day -day living. So, you know, I don't go crazy on it. I feel like this is even a bit too deep to what I usually do it, but, but yeah, I am very shiny today. It's weird how shiny I am. So now I'm gonna go with the, do you know what? <laughs> this is the most basic, face powder you can get it's literally the, the cheapest like the cheapest Ramel powder in transparent but I've used this since I've been a teenager and I've used lots and lots and lots of other powders over the years and I still keep going back to this one I don't know why but this one is still my favorite even after all these years and it's the most basic it's like 2 99 but sometimes cheaper like sometimes more expensive isn't always better it can be sometimes but not always like and I'm going to do another video about that how you don't have to spend a lot on things and sometimes you are just buying the brand sometimes so you are buying quality so it just depends but I'm going to do a whole video basing on that so yeah I'm just going to pat the powder in a little bit just to take some of this shine away on my face I don't know why I'm so shiny today gonna pat it all in so you look at the difference already how like <laughs> the, the, the comparison for shine a lot better now I'm gonna put some on my face I'm not normally this shiny I'm really bizarre maybe because I am using the retinol cream now maybe the retinol cream is I don't know making affecting my skin a little bit more I don't know to be honest see look and now I've put the powder on it's making this blend out a little bit so it's not as harsh Oh my god, look at the difference, man. Look at the shine difference. <laughs> Why am I so shiny? <laughs> okay, let's just get rid of that shine. Because that's going to really bug me. Okay, next thing I do is eyebrows. Um, I'm trying this thing out, actually. It's, it's actually quite new. I tend to just use, like, a powder normally. But this is the, like, it's like an eyebrow pencil um, from revolution again i kind of did like a big revolution thing but i quite like this it's like a it's like an angled i don't know if it's gonna focus on this but it's like an angled oh is it gonna focus it's not focusing but it's got like a, like a little angled um pe like pen part at the end where you can just draw on the eyebrows so i do find this comes out quite heavy so you have to be like super light so you don't like have really really heavy caterpillar eyebrows but anyway guys yeah so that's why so a lot of things were going on. So then when I became fully self-employed on Etsy, I was just doing fairs. I was just like relentless, getting stuff up on Etsy, doing fairs. Just, it was like work, 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 work. I just worked fully. I went fully into it and I went a bit like crazy with the fairs. But you know, I did make some money. So <laughs> not complaining. But the fairs did get a bit too much in the end. And to be honest, they, there can be a little bit of cattiness in the fairs. And I'm just not, I'm just not the person for it. Honestly, I'm not a big fan of drama. I'm not one of those, I'm not a big, yeah, I'm just not a person for it. I just want to be there to work and just enjoy my time and not deal with people. <laughs> so, and also I kept getting sick all the time. I kept getting sick all the time from the fairs. And I think it's because I did a lot of schools. I went to a lot of primary schools and stuff like that. And I just kept getting sick all the time. And I got very sick last year, like last year on the run up to Christmas, I was sick for like 12 weeks in a row. And I had one thing after another thing after another thing. It then, I then had a wisdom tooth infection. And I think that was because I um, was so run down from being so sick and I had chest infections. I ended up being on two super strong antibiotics for like two weeks to try to clear out everything. And that was at the end of the year just gone. So that, that was Christmas just gone now. And and I was still sick in January. And it took to the end of January to get over. That's when I had the antibiotics in January to get rid of everything. And I was just like, wow, I've got so ill from the fairs. And um, 
and I'm so good. I, I have sa- hand sanitizer on my table. I sanitize my hands all the time. Uh, and I still got sick, I think, because I guess the things are airborne. You're just going to catch everything. And to be honest, my immune system isn't the best. My I've always I've always had a rubbish immune system where I get sick all the time. No matter how much I eat well, how much I exercise, I still get sick all the time. So it's just, I don't know what's wrong with me, but I just get sick all the time. Um, nothing medically wrong with me, but I just do. So because of that, I uh, have decided this year not to do the fairs anymore. Well, at least to mimonize them and do less of them. Maybe maybe I'll do a couple of my favorite ones. Um, I do have some booked for June and July, but you know, I'm not too worried um, because it's always been my live stream to do this whole YouTube stuff, right? So I've always wanted to do YouTube as my main job. Even at the beginning, I've always wanted to use YouTube as my main income. My, why do my eyebrows look a bit weird? Not sure what's going on there. <laughs> Maybe because I haven't put my eyeliner on, it looks weird. They also look quite, they got like a red tone on camera, which is kind of weird. They don't look red in person, they look brown, but weird. <laughs> so yeah, the YouTube thing is something I've always wanted to do. And I make a vision board every year. I've got my vision board hung up here next to me. I'll do a whole video on my vision board if you guys want to see that. Please let me know. The whole point of this doing this video is to sort of give you a bit of details. If you are then interested in more videos about a certain subject I mention, then please let me know because I'm more than happy to do a video on that. But I make a vision board every year. And every single year on my vision board, YouTube is on there as my main goal to get monetized, to get like, you know, just be just to be able to live on YouTube that's always been my live stream and I just love I enjoy it so much I love doing the video editing I love doing the um like all the stuff for it um I've you know I just love the creative world it's it's like and the media world it's always been my dream so I decided I decided I'm going to do it now and by not doing the fairs gives me time to do YouTube because something I struggled with before I was just working like mad for Etsy last last year that it just became relentless I had no time for anything else I didn't have time to see friends and I didn't have time to do YouTube and YouTube's always my thing that's more important to me so I've decided to sort of throw in the fairs this year so I can focus on YouTube and make something out of YouTube so that's my main goal out of all this and this is why I'm finally back because I now have time to film. Um, I'm still running my Etsy shop and my Etsy shop is my main source of income. So for me now, my Etsy shop is just keeping me afloat so I can do YouTube videos because obviously I don't get paid for YouTube videos at the moment. I'm hoping that would be the uh, the dream. <laughs> I, it's on my vision board for the end of this year to get monetized for the end of this year. So that'd be nice <laughs> if I could do that. But at the moment, I'm using Etsy as my thing to keep me going in the background so I have time to do YouTube because if I had to get another job again, I would then struggle for time to do YouTube. So, yeah, so everything, like I keep saying, things happen for a reason and things happen when they're meant to happen at the time they're meant to happen. And for me, I believe that this has happened because I was meant to do YouTube now at this point. But I had to get here first, like I had to build an Etsy shop and I had to build a self-employment life to then have the time now to film the YouTube stuff that I've always wanted to do. So this is why I've done it this way around. Yeah, kind of weird, kind of like meta when you think about it. <laughs> but yeah, so this is uh, where I am now and this is where I am today and this is why I'm here for you guys now. Um, and I've got lots of things planned for the video. Um, yeah, and some of the stuff happened. I've been in a few plays as well. I've got back to my acting roots, which is something that I've always wanted to do. Like I said, I've always been in that creative mindset. I've always loved acting. I've always loved performing. And for me, YouTube is just part of that package. But I have been in a few community plays and I'm actually going to be in another one now for the summer. I've got a very small part for the next one. But in the last play I did, I was like one of the main characters and I had something like 300 lines to learn. It was it was intense <laughs> and I was really busy because it was during like the Christmas season like so I was very busy on Etsy and then I had to learn these and I was still doing fairs then too yeah and I got sick <laughs> so yeah that was 
quite intense trying to do all that. I definitely took too much on last year. It's probably why I got quite run down because I think I just took too much on. So the eyeliner I'm using is the Morphe uh, gel, I mean the Morphe pen liner. I know Morphe is meant to be like going bust or something, like Morphe are breaking down as a brand, but I love their eyeliner so much. I'm going to have to try to buy some of these before they all shut down completely. I don't know, is Morphe actually closing down or they just gone into administration? I don't really know what's going on with that brand, but there's been a lot of drama around them and I know that they are like disbanding or something, but... I need some Morphe eyeliners in my life. <laughs> so I'm not going to do my full eye because I'm going to be filming for YouTube um, now. That's what I'm getting ready for. I'm going to be putting my false eyelashes on. So I'm just going to use this um, to do the wings uh, just on the corners because I find the pen works better than the... Because uh, uh, I use magnetic lashes. So the, eye the eyeliner on the magnetic lashes don't work as well for the, for the flicks. So I'm just going to stretch out my eye. Just do a little flick here. Oh, I think my pen is drying out a little bit. Oh no, this is not going well. So the eyelash that I use is this one. It's just magnetic. It's just a generic magnetic eyelash thing. I got it from Amazon, so it's just a really sort of basic one. But to be honest, I've actually tried a lot of these on Amazon, like lots of different brands, and this one is definitely the best one. It keeps the eyelashes on all day without them falling off. Um, okay, this is gonna be the tricky bit now. I don't want to get. <laughs> I don't want to make a mess. Okay, just okay. I'm gonna have to. Break. I can't talk to you guys while I do this. Okay, just gonna go. Oh, uh, I just realized a mistake, guys. I did get a little bit of eyeliner on my eyeball. Look, you can see. It. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. I can't really fix it either. I just tried fixing it fixing it but my eyeliner is so like strong it ain't gonna come off and as I wipe it off so whatever we'll just have to ignore it you can't really see it anyway luckily I've got hooded eyes so it kind of covers it but I think it's probably what happened in the first place I think my hooded eye squashed it so while the eyeliner is drying I'm gonna go in with the mascara and I've got the mini version I need to buy the full version I actually got this in an advent calendar and I actually love it it's the Kat Von D go big or go home mascara this start, this is actually amazing. I do have another, I got a Benefit mascara that I like a lot too, but I am digging this. I really need to get a full size version because they've only got the mini, the mini one. But my God, this really, really packs a punch for a mascara. Like, and it's a really nice big bushy one that like gives me the really bushy lashes. Stuff. This is like a really nice mascara. And I only do like two coats because I don't want it to be too like patchy. And I also going to put false eyelashes on anyway. So I don't need it to be um, too crazy. Go and put my eyelashes on and the lipstick. I look a bit naked without my lipstick now. I'm going to go and straighten my hair because I always like to do that before I do the eyelashes. Before I do my lipstick because I don't want it sticking to my lips or getting caught in my eyelashes <laughs> so let me go and plug in my straighteners and i'll go and do that now and i'll chat to you guys then be like if you guys want to see more videos like this i could do like get ready with, get ready with me but do like a different subject per thing almost like a podcast i can always do like a podcast get ready with me <laughs> like teaching like doing different subjects of different things so i'm like more than happy to do that if you guys want to see that maybe give me some suggestions of topics you guys want to see because i am really into that sort of thing i am not doing this properly do not judge me, Brad Mondo. <laughs> this is not how I would normally do it. I'm doing it for quickness today because this video has already run on a bit too long, I think. There we go. Much more like me again. Right, now I've got to choose a lip colour. Okay, lipsticks, I'm going to go with the Body Shop and it's the... Cur uh, is it... Caro Caro? I'll show you a picture of it anyway. It's this one. Yeah, it wouldn't zoom in for some reason. But anyway, I'm going to go with this one. It's kind of like a mauve, but it's got like a kind of... Oh, it's a little bit crumpled at the top. That's my fault. It's kind of... It's it's like a mauve, but it's kind of got like a plum kind of base to it. So it's quite a nice colour. So I'm going to try this one. The Body Shop's formulas are always quite nice as well. They're really hydrating and moisturising. Of course, because I used to work for Body Shop, 
I have a lot of insight <laughs> to the brand and to the products. Yeah, it's actually really nice and it's really glossy as well. Oh, that's actually really, really pretty. I haven't actually used this one before. But I do love the body shop colours in general. They are really nice. Right, so that's the lipstick done. Now the final thing is to put the eyelashes on. They go on so, so easily. Literally. One, two. Just going to kind of shove it down a little bit. There we go. And they're on. <laughs> that's how quick and easy it is, guys. And there we go. And I kind of just squidge in my lashes in with the fake ones because I do find they kind of hold better if you kind of squidge in your existing ones. But yeah I think I'm going to start wrapping up the video there today. Like I said please let me know if you prefer the long form con content over the short form content. If you want shorter videos that are more like 10-15 minutes or you're quite happy to have these long discussion videos. Maybe you like both and I'll do a mixture of both. Like I said I'm happy to do long form because I can easily do like a podcast. There's plenty of things to talk about in the world. Lots of crazy stuff going on in the world right now easy to talk about subjects <laughs> and I love I love podcasts like Joe Rogan and stuff as well so I have loads of like context and opinions of things so if you want me to see more videos of that if you want me to do more videos of that then please let me know because I'm more than happy to do that too and uh yeah also follow me on TikTok if you haven't already because I'm planning on doing quite a few um like poll videos on there and do more like little makeup reviews and that so there'll be a bit more on tiktok as well that is different to youtube but i'm thinking of doing like more get ready get ready with me's because i'm quite enjoyed this today and i'm thinking of doing like a tiktok video where i do like three makeup palettes three lipstick shades or whatever and then you you guys can vote on which one you want and then i will do a face of makeup based on what you choose so that way there's a bit of interaction and you guys can choose what i'm going to wear that day that might be quite cool to do as well um yeah so maybe we'll experiment with a little bit of that as well but thank you all for sticking to the end if you're here with me now thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you i appreciate it so much and if i have earned your subscription today please subscribe and join the happy cat family you won't believe how much i treasure and i'm so honored that you guys will follow me in my journey it really does mean the world to me so thank you so so much for sticking around and thank you all for watching take care stay safe and until next time bye we're